days of the present war, a Neutrality Act prohibited American manufacturers from delivering planes to belligerents on foreign soil. Sympathetic to Great Britain and her allies, but legal to the last, their pilots were ordered to fly the ships as close as possible to the Canadian border. Democratic ingenuity and a stout rope did the rest. Harvard trainer, isn't it? Yes. How do you do? I'm Flight Lieutenant Redmond. I was told to deliver this ship here. Here she is. You were told to deliver it here? Yes, this is Trenton, isn't it? Yes, Trenton, Canada. Canada? Yes. Well, now, what do you know about that? I was looking for Trenton, New Jersey. My compass must have gone haywire. You got a cigarette? Yes. Now, how do you suppose that I could have ever mistaken Canada for New Jersey? Well, you better come along to the CO. Okay with me. Mr. Baker. Have you ever heard of the Neutrality Act? Oh, yes, sir. The newspapers are full of it. Then why did you deliberately violate it? What difference does it make? Whether I land it on our side and you tow it across, or whether I fly it across. You get the same airplane, don't you? Who does anybody think they're fooling? We won't argue the point, Mr. Baker. Nor will we be a party to any action likely to embarrass a friendly government. I'm afraid you will not be permitted to ferry any more aircraft. Good day. OK. Okay, if you want to keep the war in low gear, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Baker. If you know of any capable pilots, you might mention that we're in need of men to ferry bombers across to England. It pays rather well, you know. Just what do you call rather well? A well, thousand dollars a flight and all expenses. <laughs> of course, we wouldn't want our aircraft delivered by way of Berlin, on the theory that they are to be employed in that vicinity eventually anyhow. A thousand bucks a flight will keep me right on my course. Shall I drop a memo to the flight superintendent of Montreal? Why don't you drop it by telephone? I'd like to take a job while I'm full of enthusiasm. Not a bad idea, Baker. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, England's to the east, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Concentrate on this first time. There's no beam out here, you know. That's four trips a month. Fifty-two trips a year. I'm taking two weeks out for a vacation. That's fifty thousand bucks. What was that? Fifty thousand bucks. <laughs> Boy, what a war. I've tried all the frequency bands. I can't even get a whisper out of this set. Well, why don't you try BBC? You know, when I was flying the mails back in America, I used to always ride in on Kate Smith. Boy, there's a beam for you. This was London in the early days of the war. A city of homes and churches, and shops and pubs, of roast beef and old school ties, and Big Ben and the fog. 
the very heart and core of England. Wake up, sir. Wake up, sir. We're at the hotel. Go away. Go away. You really got to get out, sir. It's against orders to loiter here. I'm going to sleep till that boat goes out. What's up? Uh, on second thought, I can sleep on the boat all the way home. Oh, yes, but... I think I found the beam again. Well, make sure it's quite your turn. Stand up for it, guys. Five eight, ten is our morning leader. Four five is that. Five eight, lead about it. Meow. Meow. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon, but have you seen anything of a little gray-white cat? Cat? Why, no. Oh, she's a gorgeous creature. Been in the family for years. You know, long, silky fur. Hello, Dolly. Hello, dear. Friend of yours? Oh, no, just the man who's lost his cat. Poor fellow, he must be terribly cut up. It's only air raid practice. Lie down. Be quiet, young man. You know you're in a very serious condition. Or Miss Brown, you drivers are responsible for the blankets. When inspection closes, be sure they're folded neatly and returned to the ambulances. Yes, Lady Fitzhugh. Yes, very good. Very good indeed. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Oh, yes, that's very good. Yes, goodbye. Oh, this bandage is far too tight and needs a splint. Loosen it and be sure you keep your patient well covered. Yes, very good indeed. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Miss Cross, I'm completely mystified. This man's bandage and the nature of his injury, really. Thank you, gentlemen. I say, miss, can't you help me? Hello, honey. You worm. How's that for a fractured jaw? I didn't expect to see you here. Didn't expect to see you anywhere if I could help it. Ah, oh, that kiss says differently. Besides, nobody can hold a grudge for a whole year. I can. What do you mean? I'm the one who ought to be sore. I come home to Dallas, find you gone, and ask for that nasty note. I'd have rigged up a shotgun pointing at the door if I'd had any string. How can you say a thing like that? Could I help it if I got caught in a snowstorm at Tulsa and had to make a detour? I know all about that detour. Her name was Irene. Oh, so that's what you thought. I always knew I could clear it up if I could just see you and explain. That's the best thing you do, explain. But you needn't bother. I'm not interested. As far as you and I are concerned, it's over. You understand? Finish. Done. Now, scat. Well, I must say, that's a fine way to treat a guy who just flew all the way across the Atlantic to see you. You flew the Atlantic? Sure, the minute I heard you were in England, nothing could keep me away. I don't believe you. But it's true, honey, so help me. I've changed. I've changed a lot. You'll be surprised. You'll never surprise me again. Hey, wait a minute. You don't think I'm going to take that for an answer, do you, after flying 3,000 miles just to be with you? Oh, stop it. I've got work to do. Oh, my, you make an awful cute soldier. 
It's a great idea, enlisting the chorus. It's funny nobody ever thought of it before. I'm not in the chorus. And there's nothing funny about my trying to help out. At night, I'm dancing at... Where? Never mind where. And keep away from me. There you go again. Still talking about the old baker. The new baker's a pretty steady model. But what harm could there be in just giving me a tryout? I tell you what I'll do. I'll stay here in London. They need flyers here. They need flyers in the RAF. But that's hardly in your line. If I remember correctly, you're the boy that blacks out at anything less than a thousand a month. Why don't you ever give me any credit? I have ideals. I have as many ideals as the next fellow. You've got the wrong word. You're talking about ideas, and yours isn't going to work. Oh, honey, don't be that way. Well, I haven't looked at another girl since you left. Well, I've looked at other men. Maybe, but I'll bet you didn't look at him the same way you looked at me that first night in Kansas City. Remember? You were going east, and I was going west. And we saw each other, and I was going east, too. That same old spark still there, honey. Sure, we've been off course a few times, but we can get back on again. Why fight against it? Young man, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to kiss her. Apparently, the seriousness of our work has escaped you. I'm, I'm sorry, Lady Fitzhugh. You really should be ashamed of yourself, young man. What time do you go off duty, milady? Barely. Sorry, sir. This table is reserved. For whom? Lord Delvis. Oh. His lordship prefers something less conspicuous. You might give him the table you were going to give me. Frightfully good, isn't she? Yeah, frightfully. Would you like me to introduce you? Awfully decent of you, old chap. But I already know her. Oh. Then would you mind introducing me? What are your intentions? Nothing good, I'm afraid. Then you can see how impossible it is for me to do anything for you. Absolutely. Uh, would you like a drink? No, no, thank you. I'm just on my way back to call for it. I envy you. If there's a lull in the conversation, you might put in a good word for Flying Officer Roger Pilby. If there's a lull in the conversation, it'll be no time for recommendations. Thank you. Hello, darling. Hi. Uh, Carl, dear, I'd like you to meet Miss Jones. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Miss Lynn, I may I present Captain Deering. How do you do? Miss Jones, Captain How are Deering. you? How do you do? I, uh, I beg your pardon. Has Miss Brown come out yet? Well, uh, she must have left some time ago. Oh. Uh, just a minute. What are your plans? Well, I had a tentative engagement. Something that both of us could do? I don't mind. 
Okay. We'll do it in a fortnight. Tim, what are you doing here? Waiting to take you to supper. I mean in that uniform. Oh, I'm just breaking it in for a friend. Come on. Didn't I make it clear that I don't want anything more to do with you? But you don't have to have anything to do with me in a public restaurant. We'll just eat, tip the waiter, and go our separate ways. How'd you find out where I was working? I have a friend in the Ministry of Information. Come on. All right. But only because I still want to know how you got that uniform. But we'll keep the table between us. It's a splendid idea. We'll have the waiter put some food on it. Huh? That was a very interesting supper. Every time I move my chair closer to yours, you moved yours away. We must have looked like a merry-go-round. You still haven't told me what you're doing in that uniform. Well, that ought to be perfectly clear. I want to go where you go. Do what you do and be where you be. Come on, sweet warm-up. After all, we're in the same army. That ought to make it official. Driver, right here. Tim, you needn't bother to get out. Well, I'll just see you to your door. Thank you, Governor. Good night, Tim. I said I'll see you to your door. Shh. There's no harm in that, is there? Good night, Tim. You said you wanted to say goodbye like a gentleman. This is your chance. Goodbye. Oh, hadn't I better come in and just open a window or something? The windows are open. Maybe I better turn on the heat. You've been turning it on all evening, but it's not going to do you any good. I give up. Here I am, acting like a gentleman, the perfect escort. Thoughtful, considerate. Oh, gee, but you're beautiful. Goodbye, honey. Tim. You worm. What the? I say, why don't you look where you're... I'm awfully sorry. Uh, go ahead. Definitely our fault. Oh, no, no, I, I'm sure it was mine. Uh, well, we shouldn't have backed out without warning you. Decided they're not. Oh, that, that's very kind I of you. I trust you're not shaken up. Oh, oh no, not at all. Uh, I hope I haven't done you any damage either. Oh, oh not, not at least. Perfectly right. Right. Oh, well, thank you. Going. All right, get in. You fellows run along without me. I just remembered I'm to see Richardson. An excellent idea. Wish I'd remembered too. Give him our love. <laughs> This is a surprise. Did I forget my dinner pail? <laughs> no, I'm here on official business for Lady Fitzhugh. Well, which one's yours? Oh, stop kidding. These are Lockheed Hudson's. Bombers. Well, where are all those cute little Spitfires? That's what I've been trying to find out. Can you imagine they put me in school? Me? Operational training. Teaching me to fly under wartime conditions. Well, I've forgotten more about an airplane than those guys will ever know. Well, didn't you tell them about all the experience you had had? Testing and, and, and flying the mail? Sure, it's no secret. Well, what'd they say? Well, they were very polite about it. They said that with all my experience, I probably wouldn't have the slightest difficulty catching on. Meanwhile, I suppose I won't see you at all. Well, of course you will. I'll pick you up tonight after the show, backstage. Now that I'm a schoolboy, I gotta have somebody help me with my homework. I can't wait. I better go now, honey. I don't want to be tardy, and I'm going to a lecture. 
Goodbye. Goodbye. And don't be too difficult with teacher. This Messerschmitt 109 was shot down on Tuesday of last week. Now, before I go on to show you its most vulnerable points, I have here a report made by the pilot of the Spitfire, which brought it down. It seems that he was at 30,000 feet. Mr. Baker, if I were you, I'd listen rather carefully to this. You might want some information on a 109 in a hurry one day. Yes, sir. That's all right. Go ahead. I'm listening. It'll start better with this in place. Uh, what's that? The rotor off your distributor. Oh, did it fall off? No, I took it off. You know the regulation, don't you? I know there's a regulation about taking something or other off your car so that parachuters can't drive away in it, but never could find out what it was you were supposed to take off. This is it. You just lifted out of your distributor. I thought I'd better do it for you so the police wouldn't catch you. It's very nice of you. If anyone was going to catch you, I wanted to be the one. Uh, do you catch many this way? I never tried before. Really? In fact, I never thought about it before. Well, you couldn't have done any better if you'd spent hours working it out. Do you suppose you could put it back just as easily? If you insist. Maybe I'd better watch so I can do it myself next time. If you ever lose it, apply to the nearest German parachutists. They undoubtedly carry duplicates. They're quite thorough, you know. <laughs> so I've heard. I'm afraid I've made a botch of this. How far did you expect to get on just one rotor? I was hoping to learn your name, at least. Why should you? I don't know yours. I'm John Morley. How do you do, Mr. Morley? Goodbye. <laughs> By license, BHX-528. Friend of yours, Morley? Uh, my uh, cousin, sir, from Glasgow. She's going to spend a few days in London. When your cousin spends a few days in London, does she usually dance and sing with eight other beautiful girls at the Regency House? You don't say, sir. I'm afraid my aunt will be terribly upset. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir, but they are all reserved. I can give you something not too far back. Oh, that won't do, Louis. I want to be where I can get a close look at the chorus. That's what everybody wants, sir. A close look at the chorus. Well, there must be something you can do. This is a very important occasion for me. There is a flying officer at one of our best tables. And I'm a squadron leader. So you are, sir. This way, please. <laughs> But there has been a mistake in the reservations. Would you allow me to place you at another table? Definitely not. Excuse me, sir, but I'm sure the squadron leader will consider it a personal thing. It's uh, rather important to me. If you're using your rank to exert pressure, it'll do you no good, sir. I'm not at all ambitious in a military way. I'm sorry. However, if you care to share my table, I've no objection. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you, too, sir. Good, isn't she? Very good. The singer, I mean. So do I. Really? Would you like me to introduce you, sir? Thank you, but I already know her. You do? How is it that everybody in London knows her but me? Would you like to introduce me? No, I wouldn't. Anyone who creates competition for himself is an ass. I quite agree with you, but I thought I'd give you a try. Well, thanks very much for the use of your table. I suppose you're going to meet her now. Yes. Well, if opportunity knocks, would you shove in a good word for Roger Pilby? If opportunity knocks, I'll be speechless. Thank you all.
Hello there. Hello. I uh, hate to seem persistent. Well, let's face facts. You are. Yes, yeah, so I am. Now that we run into each other again, perhaps you'll have supper with me. Oh, I'd like to very much, but uh, I'm afraid my husband wouldn't like it. You're... Oh, really? You're married? That's the way one usually gets a husband. It's rather stupid of me. I suppose I should have considered that possibility, but I didn't. I doubt if your husband would approve of my dismantling your distributor. No, no, I'm afraid he wouldn't. Of course, there was nothing wrong with what I did. That car's as good as it ever was. I think it works better now that I know its innermost secrets. Bye. May I see you home? Uh, no, no, thank you. My husband will be along directly. I see I've made a botch of this all over again. Nevertheless, I've enjoyed meeting you once more. Goodbye. Goodbye. However, on second thought, since your husband isn't here yet, you may as well sit down and have a cigarette. I wish you wouldn't. He might misunderstand. Oh, I don't see how he could. I rather imagine he'd think the joke was on me. Do you have a cigarette? No, no, thank you. Do you mind if I do? Hmm? Oh, no. Perhaps I will have one. He might have fallen asleep. Quite. He, he works days. Really? I'm afraid something's detained him. Possibly. Perhaps I had better run along. I'd be delighted to drive you. No, 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 thank you. That won't be necessary. Not necessary, but very pleasant. Sounded, sir. Will you please take cover? All right, and thank you. Not at all, sir. Air rain, take cover. The alert is sounded. Please take cover. Shall we go in that church? It looks quite unperturbed. All right. From what I read in the papers, the church is the one thing they never miss. <laughs> You others seem to have had the same idea. There's lots of room in front, among the sinners. Shall we sit here? I knew that old boy. He was quite a stickler. Went to his grave, convinced that the Lord made only two kinds of people. His kind and the rest of the world. If he were here tonight, I'm sure he wouldn't approve of all this. I take it then that this is a very fashionable church. Indisputably. Some of our very best people have been married here. By the way, were you married in a church? No. Judge's chambers? No. Registry office? Why all this sudden interest in my vital statistics? You may as well know, Miss Brown. I'm vitally interested. You may as well know. I'm not married. You don't say. I only told you that to discourage you. Well, it worked perfectly. I was discouraged. Then you might as well also know, I think you're very attractive. Ah. But a little late. I see. There's someone else. But there must be some hope. If you say I'm attractive, you aren't married. Surely, unless your wedding's arranged to take place within the next half hour, I have a sporting chance. You must be terribly in love with him. Mm, insane. I wonder if he knows how lucky he is. I... I think so. Is he all clear? Then I must go. Of course, they, uh, they may come back. General feeling seems to be that they won't. Dull fellows. No feeling whatever for romance. Good night. Shall we say the Ivy about one on Thursday? What for? Lunch. There's no purpose in it. There's no harm in it either. All right. The Ivy at one. Good night. I hope you believe me when I tell you that this is the first air raid I've ever actually enjoyed. Uh, no doubt the spiritual effect of the church. Good night, Miss Brown. Hello. 
It's almost two. I'm due back at school. I hope I didn't upset your plans. No, no, it was my fault. I'm sorry I stood you up. It's quite all right. How was kindergarten? Jolly. Some jerk gave us a lecture on fundamentals. Over and over again, the same things, I nearly went nuts. That's why I came here to take a nap rather than show up at the Regency house. It really doesn't matter. Now, don't be like that. At least I wasn't out with anybody else. Really? I was. He was very charming. If I'd known you were here, I'd have asked him in. Oh, so that's it, hmm? Trying to make me burn. Not at all. Just bringing you up to date. I'm having lunch with him Thursday. Say, I believe you were out with somebody else. I know, honey. I'm a worm. Gentlemen, you've completed your training and you're now ready for active service. And you've got a pretty tough job in front of you. But I want to thank you all for the keenness you've shown has helped make my job such an easy one. Your appointments will be posted on the notice board. Congratulations and good luck. Officer Baker, sir. Oh, yes, you're the American. I see I've been assigned to your flight, sir. That's right. Glad to have you, Baker. Take a seat. Thank you. Matter of fact, I've just been going over your record. It's excellent. Well, if it's so good, sir, why wasn't I assigned to a fighter squadron? Each man in the RAF is assigned to the post where he's most needed and is best qualified to fit. I think you'll find a bomber has its points. Perhaps, for those who like that sort of thing, sir. But frankly, grousing along over the roar in a bomber isn't exactly my idea of excitement. Aren't you laboring under a slight misapprehension, Baker? Flying a fighter in the excitement of a scramble is one thing. You can go up and get it over with. It's something else to be up there for five or six hours in a bomber, making a target of yourself. Maybe, sir. But I'm not, as they say, constitutionally suited to it. I'm the nervous type. I don't like to brood over anything for five or six hours. Well, we'll try to see that you get enough action in the squadron to keep you happy. Oh, come in, Wales. Let me introduce Pilot Officer Baker, who's just been posted to our squadron, Flying Officer Wales. How do you do? How do you do? I'm sure you'll find it jolly here. Yeah, jolly. Come along, I want you to meet the others. Gentlemen. This is Pilot Officer Baker from America, our new squadron member. Pilot Officer Starling Richardson. How are you, Baker? I do. Flying Officer Graves. How'd you do? How'd you do? Pilot Officer Thorndike. Thorndike. You, Baker. And Flying Officer Watson. How do you do, Watson? Oh, Baker. And uh, Flying Officer Philby. Oh, hello. How'd you do? I know you. You're the man who wouldn't introduce me to Carol Brown at the Regency House. Sure, I remember. How are you? Well, this is remarkable. Morley wouldn't introduce me to her either. Fancy this. All the men who wouldn't introduce me in one room. Seems we have a great deal more in common than I thought, sir. Yeah, apparently. Have you known her long? Not very. I haven't seen much of her lately. Been sort of confined with that operational training that they hand you over here. How is she? Oh, splendid. Perhaps you'd like to see the place. This is the blue room. And over here is the hall of mirrors where we hold all our soirees. Let me see. Baker. B-A-K-E-R. Yes, that'll fit in just nicely. I do the carving myself. Rather neat, don't you think? Took to it from the moment I could first hold a knife. Yes? Yes, sir. We're wanted in the operations room. All right, let's go. I haven't had a chance to add Wilson's name yet. He's the lad you're replacing, you know. And your objective tonight is Berlin. Well, gentlemen, you've received your operations orders. In addition, I want reconnaissance reports. Observe particularly landmarks, lights, and any concentrations of troops and equipment that are not indicated. 
Each aircraft will carry 200,000 leaflets to be scattered thoroughly over the city and suburbs. Leaflets? Yes, Baker, leaflets. Any further questions, gentlemen? Zero hour, 1,800 hours. Synchronize your watches, gentlemen. It will be exactly 15.32 now. Good luck. Thank you, sir. No. I'm not in a war. I'm back carrying the mail. Can I help you, sir? No, thank you, Corporal, but you might see if there's anything you can do for Mr. Baker. Uh, Mr. Baker, sir? Yeah, that's me. Bomb aimer, navigator, second cook and bottle washer. But don't let that throw you. I'm like the friend who went along on the honeymoon, just for the ride. Well, this is a coincidence, you might say. Seeing as how my name's Baker, too. Harry Baker. I wonder if we could be related. Could be. Do you spell it with a B? Oh, yes, sir. B-A-K-E-R. Baker. <laughs>
Jim. Hello? Oh, hello, Tim. Just a minute, just a minute. Just a moment, please. Hello? Listen, honey. I'm afraid I'm going to be a little late. We got held up by a traffic light in Berlin. I had to have a few hours sleep so I could look my best. You mind? No, no, of course I don't mind. How long will you be? Uh, 45 minutes on the dot. Okay? Of course it's okay. That a gal. But don't be late, Tim. Bye. Oh! Oh, goodness! Hello. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Well, you just caught me in the shower, that's all. But, uh, well, well, give me a minute. Uh, count three, then come on in. Righto. One, two, three. Here I come. I was only 30 streets away, so I decided to drop in. I'll be out in a minute. I knew you didn't have a show today, and as I happen to have 48 hours leave, I hoped you might drive down to my father's place in Kent with me. Sorry, I would have loved it, but I already have a date. Nothing you could, uh, could ignore? I'm afraid not. Sometimes being rude at the right moment makes a social career. Or wrecks one. Well, there's something to that. You know, you've completely ruined my weekend. Well, can't you go anyway? No. I hope you forgive the way I look, but I, I was trying to hurry. Beautiful. And there's nothing for it but to go to the club and grumble about having to stay in London. Well, I'll be getting along. Oh, you needn't hurry. Why should I tantalize myself? It's much better to make it a quick, clean wound and go. But I'll try again next week, earlier. Goodbye. Goodbye. You're sure you won't? Mm-mm. I have no idea how lovely it can be in Kent at this time of year. Then I expected his goodbye. Goodbye. Come in. Hello, boy. Hello, Roger. Where are you bound for? London. To meet her? Rather. I'm going to London, too. I don't suppose there's any possibility. Uh, not the slightest, old boy. <clears throat> Your esprit de corps is practically non-existent. Tell me, how does a fellow get to London when he's in a hurry? Well, fellows who haven't got cars walk into the village and get a train. The journey takes approximately three hours. Well, that's just dandy. I told her I'd be there in 45 minutes. Then you'll be exactly two hours and 15 minutes late, if the train's on time. Well, come on, let's hurry. Oh, I'm not taking the train. I have a car. Cheerio. Oh, boy, a car. That's what I call a break, you having a car. No, it won't do you a bit of good dropping all those hints around, old man. If you won't share your female with me, then I certainly won't share my Austin with you. Oh, uh, now, look here, I... Why, there's, there's nothing in the world I'd rather do than introduce you to Miss Brown. Then I should be delighted to drive you up to town. Won't you get in? Thank you. I'm in. Service. But at the moment, I'm uh, looking for the beam. Well, they got another name for it over here. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I inherited a dukedom. One of the provisions of the will was that I join the RAF. Oh, it's Flying Officer Roger Pilby, Al Bennett. How do you do? Well, well, I think we ought to preserve this reunion in alcohol. What do you say? Of course, it's no coincidence that you're in front of a saloon. <laughs> they call it pub over here. Oh. Come on, Roger. I'd like to some other time, old chap, but don't forget we've got an engagement up in town. Oh, it'll only take a minute. Come on, we'll still beat that train by an hour. Uh, when'd you get in, Al? Yesterday, at daybreak. Pushed up a new record, too, I think. Eight hours and 12 minutes. Eight hours and 12 minutes. Well, say, that tops my time. Look at that. That's a lot of hot air. I'll never try that again. Hello, sister. Why, good evening, gentlemen. Three fast beers. Bitter for me, miss. You know, when you ask for whiskey over here, you get scotch. When you ask for ice, you get hot water. <laughs> How's it going, Al? Still flying them across. Three a month. I'd be a wealthy man if my wife wasn't attaching my salary. Yeah, that's good, though. How much do you get? Hey, they pay me off in stamps. I don't savvy. That'll be one of the 11th, Peter. Right-o. Shall we say to Miss Brown? Brown? K-1-1. 
Carol Brown? She over here? You mean you know her too? Oh, sure, I knew her when Tim knew her. Everybody in the world knows her but me. However, this is my day. I mean night. Tonight, at last, Miss Brown and I are going to find each other. Now, wait a minute. You're only meeting her. Oh, I realize that, but the war being what it is, old boy, if there should be any sudden sadness, she'll have me to cry on. She might even come into possession of the Pilby ring. Was that, a telephone number? It's a gold ring in frightful taste and worth absolutely nothing, but the family tradition is that it must always go to the right woman. How do you know? Well, I never carry it with me. I don't trust myself, but it might be in the cards that uh, Miss Brown gets it. That is, of course, if you cooperate and don't get silly ideas about living forever. Three more on the same. Oh, no, really, I said. Oh, no, that's all right. He's already ordered them. I might as well drink them. What's happened to all the boys? Still faring. All but Heck Newman. Happened to hear me crack up. Now I got food poisoning at a picnic. <laughs> Say, did you hear Slip Mason's over here and got himself married to a dame with a title and a lot of money and a big house? Slip? Yeah. Gee, I'd like to see him. You know, Slip flew upside down all the way from St. Louis to New York. Yeah, really? Do you know what the time is? I'm on my way out there now. You two can drop me. How about it? No, thanks, really. Oh, gee, I'd like to, but I've got to get up to London. Oh, come on. It's right on the way. You can just run in and run out. Slip will be glad to see you, Tim. Well, okay, but, but just for a minute. We can still beat that train. Yeah, that's what the hare said to the tortoise. Oh, is hare over here, too? Here we are. You sure this is it? I swear it. It'll be all right for me to come up? Sure. Here it is, 4 o'clock in the morning. You said it would only take a minute. And he lived on the way. Why, Slip lives nearer Glasgow than he does London. Yes, but we couldn't refuse Slip when he asked us to dinner. Well, it doesn't matter about the dinner. It was telling the life story of every pilot in America. I didn't know America had as many pilots. I thought you were unprepared. Is this the... Carol! Shh, she's gone to bed. But we had a date. Why should she? Well, perhaps she was sleepy. I'll wake her up. Tell her not to go to any trouble for me. She's not home. Well, she must be. How do you like that? Just because we're a little late. All that hurry for nothing. She couldn't have misunderstood me. I talked to her on the phone. She knew we had a date. Perhaps she's on an errand. Pardon me. Will you have a drink? You gonna have one? I am. Well, I wouldn't think of letting you drink alone, oh boy. I can't believe that she'd just walk out. There's usually a simple explanation, but everyone laughs at once it's out. Yeah, but this isn't like her. She's so dependable. She isn't the coy type, is she? What do you mean? Hiding under the bed. No. Nobody could get under her bed. Everything's so lovely down here. You'd never believe there's a war on. I wouldn't be too sure. Dad or some of his home guard might pop out of a bush at any moment. Parachutists, you know. Shall we take the shortcut back to the house? It's likely to prove the longest way. By all means. I wonder if you could possibly realize what all this has meant to me. Staying in that beautiful old house, it looks as if it had been there forever. It has. The part you were in last night's a new part. It was built in 1748. The other wing dates back to the Norman Conquest. Of course, nobody's been in it for years. <laughs> Maybe it's still full of Normans. That's always been one of my pet theories. <laughs> and
And to think back home, I lived in the oldest house in town. It was 32 years old. I'll wager the plumbing was better. It didn't have any plumbing. It was in Oklahoma. My dear child, you must have been through a great deal. Oh, you don't know anything. We moved to Kansas and had a lovely house. Hot and cold water and steam heat. And along came a big wind and blew the roof off. There you were out in the cold again. Of course, I'm giving you a one-sided picture of my life. Once had a house in New Rochelle and nothing happened at all. It must have been a very wonderful house. Somehow, I prefer this one. It's yours if you want it to be. I mean that, Carol. What is it people say? Uh, this is so sudden? It would have been even sudden if I'd asked when I wanted to in that church. Marry me, Carol. I can't. Why not? Oh, lots of reasons. Holzman. What about your father? Does he know that we've seen each other exactly six times? Dancer at the Regency House? Yes. And I must admit he was a little difficult about that. Kept asking, is she a good dancer? And my family came from Oklahoma? Of course, it might be better to break Oklahoma to him by degrees. Does that clear up everything? No. No, it doesn't. It wouldn't be Baker, would it? How did you know? The best possible source, the man himself. That's it. You going to marry him? Oh, let's drop it. I don't love him. I don't know that I ever have or ever will. But when I'm with him, I can't seem to remember that. Once I didn't see him for a whole year, and I thought that when I did, it was just the same. I see. You're the one I ought to love. You're everything that Tim isn't. Then you should marry me at once, by all means. You still want me to? Of course. Baker happened before you knew me. That's merely poor timing on fate's part. I couldn't. And I'm not even sure of myself. It's about time. What are you doing here? We had a date, didn't we? Yes. We had a date yesterday. Oh, I know, honey. I'm, I'm terribly sorry about standing you up with... Oh, it's all right. Oh, here, let, let me... Uh... I'll get it. I don't have an excuse, either. I just ran into Al Bennett, and we did some hangar flying, and I just lost track of the time. That might happen to anybody. Oh, here, let, let me, I'll, I'll get that. Oh, these are pretty. Where'd you find them? In the country. Oh, you've been to the country, huh? Mm-hmm. Alone? No. Did you have a good time? Wonderful. 
Who'd you go with? A friend of mine. Listen. I know I'm a heel and I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? But there's nothing to forgive. I've had a lovely time. Well, I just don't want you to feel hurt. But I'm not hurt. Well, I guess I'd better be getting back. Yes, I think you had it. It's rather late. Goodbye, Carol. Goodbye. I said I was sorry, didn't I? I crawled. I apologized. When do I get relief? But what have I said or done? I'm not mad, really, I'm not. Will you stop needling me. Why don't you bawl me out and get it over with? But why should I bawl you out? I'm glad you didn't show up. Now, look here. What's this all about? Nothing, except we're through. Not just again, but through for keeps. Have been some weekend. It was. He couldn't have spent all his time picking flowers. He didn't. He did something that would never occur to you. Something you couldn't even understand. He asked me to marry him. So that's what's bothering you. Why didn't you say so? If you really want to get married, I'll marry you. You mean you'd make that great sacrifice just for me? Sure. I'll marry you tonight if you say so. That's awfully sweet of you, Tip. Your proposal was beautiful, romantic. Everything a girl could want it to be. But for your personal and private information, I'd rather marry a... I'm very grateful, but I can't accept. Now, please go. Somebody went out. Not her. Yes, her. Oh, dash it all. I muffed it again. Sources of large-scale German troop concentrations along the Dutch and Belgian frontiers. Advices filtering in from the lowlands appear to confirm the suspicion that some sudden Hello. military action in that direction. I say, have you fellows heard the news? Sure, I could have told you that months ago. Really? American cunning, old boy. Positively a genius, boy. All leave has been cancelled, and the flight commander has had orders for us to stand by. You had better let him know you're back. Maybe they're going to let us drop welcome mats on the low countries. You look a little faded. Strenuous weekend. If you must know, I spent my whole leave in a certain flat. If you must know. Come in. Wales said that you were worried about me, sir. So I rushed over to let you know the problem child's home again. Then I suggest you do what I'm doing. Get into uniform. That's funny. What's funny? We both seem to go in for the same kind of flowers. Yes, it is. Rather. As a matter of fact, we seem to go in for a lot of the same things. Perhaps we have more in common than we've realized. Yeah, that may be. But Carol's not one of them. I say so. The CO wishes to speak with you on the phone right away. Thank you, Roger. There's a flap on. We're all wanted at operation. You better get changed. Your objective tonight is the marshalling yard at Dortmund. There are heavy concentrations of mechanized units and material. Undoubtedly, you will encounter heavy anti-aircraft opposition. And for some of you, this will be the first time under fire. 
But I see by your faces that you're not averse to the idea. Well, that's all, gentlemen, except the intelligence officer will give you the latest details from his reports. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, the advance of the enemy has been far greater than was anticipated. It appears that the flank of the Peel line has already been turned. Your mission, therefore, is of extreme importance. Lights on. 
Never did like the dark. Even as a child used to complain bitterly. Regular tantrum. Refused to be put in a room with the lights out. Never got over it. Probably explains my passion for nightclub life. Take that, you... Show Baker, congratulations. Thanks. Well, where are we? Holland. It's a bloody windmill, isn't it? Golf, blimey, there's a stroke of luck for you. Coming down in the neutral country when I was already to be concentrated in a German concentration camp. Get out, Corporal. Yes, sir. Stand clear, both of you. I'll join you in a moment. Look. Everything but the tulips. This is real luck. Boat? Stretch of sea and perhaps some genial Dutchman to steer a course for England. Blimey! Look! What's them? Jerry's. Jerry's? Now, what do you suppose they're doing here in Holland? Hit that house quick and keep down. Hurry, Corporal. Yes, sir. Corporal, throw that last in Paris into wind. Stay down! Into the house! Hurry! Blimey! Somebody's just been here, the cop. Hand it off! Hand it off! What'd you say? Better put your hands up. Come on, Max. Before you love him, get shot in the back. I noticed that 
that. He says, turn around. You come to here. What's he say now? He wants to know how we got here. I'll tell him. It's a tough break, squarehead. There's a couple of other British planes down on this beach. General Gort's in one of them. That's just what I thought. This drip doesn't understand a word of English. If we can just keep him from letting the others know, maybe we can get to that boat at the end of the wharf and beat it. You two make a break for it. Leave him to me. Oh, so that's it, huh? A hero to the last. Well, get this. We all go or we all stay. I'm still in command here. When I jump him, you go. Very interesting debate, gentlemen. Unfortunately, you are not going anywhere. Go on, sir! Run to the boat! Cut the shots! There's nothing more we can do for him. Come on. Stand back. They're coming. Let's get to that boat. Come on. Back. Make a break for it. the maternity ward. The maternity ward? What's the matter with me? Nothing to worry about. Exposure, mostly. Lie down. Open your mouth. Put this under your tongue. How long have I been here? You've been asleep almost 40 hours. Keep it under your tongue, please. Say, you're kind of cute. You can dress now. Listen, what happened to that officer that was brought in here with me? Squadron leader Morley. Yeah, that's him. Oh, he's all right. He was discharged from here about an hour ago. Orderly, this bed is available, ready to change. Hurry and dress, please. Uh, what's all the rush? Well, I heard the Edward lady say his elders are expecting a lot of new ones, evacuees. Hi. This is a handy little garment, isn't it? at all. Of course, I won't do much elbow bending with this broken wing for a while. Won't you come in? Oh, thanks. Good 
Have you seen Morley? No, but he telephoned me. I'm meeting him at the Savoy for tea. Mind if I sit down? I'm still kind of shaky, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. Here, sit over here in this chair by the window. Would you like something on your foot? Yes, it might relieve the pressure a bit. Is that better? Yes, that's much better, thanks. Warren said you were still in the hospital when he left. Do you think you should be up and around so soon? No, just seeing you is doing me a lot more good than any hospital ever could. You know, it's funny. When I woke up, the first thing the nurse said to me was, you've been raving about a Carol. Who is she, your wife? I don't know why, but I... I said yes. Maybe it's because that's what I want more than anything else in the world. Now, please, Tim, we're not going into that again. Oh, I, I can't say that I blame you after the way I've acted. But I don't see how I can hurt someone that I love so much. Tim, I've got to go now. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, maybe this will convince you. I had this for you the other day when you threw me out. That's why I was so late for our date. Now, wait a minute. I may be dumb, but I'm not that dumb. You said you went out with Al Bennett. Sure, sure, but I was just covering up so that I could surprise you. When I got to the store, the jewel had already closed up and I had to track him home like a bird dog. It's true, honey, I swear it. Come on, put it on and we'll freak... Oh, I dropped it. The women, I'll get it. All the contemptible, dirty, low-down things you've ever done. Hey, now listen to me. Get out. Go on, get out. Honey, you know that I love you. I wouldn't go to all this bother if I didn't. Yes? Oh, hello. I, I'm sorry I'm late, but I was held up. I'll be ready in a minute. No, no, Carol, don't. I can't meet you. There's a general flap on. All leaves have been canceled. I've already reported for duty. I understand. I'll be waiting. Good luck, darling. I know you're only a poor, shattered hulk of a man, but you'd better report for duty. All leaves have been canceled. And I doubt if your commanding officer will be taken in by that broken wing as easily as I was. All right, I'll go. But not until you wish me good luck, too. Good luck and goodbye. Now, you listen to me. That guy can phone you every day of the week. And you can call him darling all you want to, but it won't do you any good. You're mine and you're gonna stay mine. Let go of me. You're hurting. There you are, my bride. And when I come back, I'll make it official. Come back here! You take this thing with you! Don't cry, darling. Don't worry about me. I'll be back. Nothing ever happens to me. He would get the wrong size. Hello, Falcon leader. Hello, Falcon leader. Message acknowledged. Rearm, refuel, emergency Hello, landing please. ground 5-2. Further orders follow. Uh, Over. A Falcon leader calling. A Falcon leader calling. A message understood. A message understood. Over. 32 squadron returning, sir. Three aircraft missing. 54 squadron, six aircraft missing. 87 squadron, four aircraft missing. 93 Squadron. Order replacements from the reserve pool. Quite yes, so, quite so. Fighter Command is. There's no time you. to rest. Has ever been a situation in history quite comparable to this? 325,000 men, the heart and core of our army are at Dunkirk, being bombed and stuffed every moment by the enemy. You have numbers at least four to one. The Navy has every available vessel afloat waiting to bring the men off. The Air Force must see that they do it. We must put every available man into action to wrest control of the air. That's 32 Squadron coming into land now. Yes, 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 definitely.
engage the enemy just south of Dunkirk, sir. About 12,000 feet. One formation, 20 Heinkels, 18 Messerschmitt, about 3,000 feet above. We use number three attack. We've got five Heinkel and three Messerschmitt. Good show, Macbeth. We're still holding them in spite of their numbers? Yes, I think so, sir. How did you get on, Walker? Hello. I got Hello. a four-second burst at a Hankel at 200 yards, sir. He went out of control at 8,000 feet in flame. Then I lost formation and made individual attack on two messes. These might be our replacements now. Johnson shoot down two Hankels, then he went out of control. I watched him land in the water. There was a launch note. I expect he was picked up. Well, you better get some coffee while you're being refueled. Sir? Pilot Officer Carson, sir, from the reserve pool. From Carson? Pilot Officer Baker, sir. From Baker? Sergeant Johnson, sir. Johnson? Good. Report to 32 Squadron. I expect you'll have just about time for a spot of coffee with the others and get back into your flying clothes before getting away. Yes, sir. What's it really like over there? Cloudy. 32 Squadron. 32 Squadron. Report for takeoff at once. Report for takeoff at once. to bombing and strafing our embarkation point. We must have aircraft help. Sir. Baker, all set, sir. Tally-ho! Tally-ho, I'm 
number if you hear anything. Any word at all? He's still missing. They just brought in one of his squadron, a chap named O'Brien, who bailed out south of Dunkirk and was picked up in a launch. He saw Tim shoot down two MEs and then get a burst himself. But O'Brien thinks there's a chance he might have bailed out. Now, I've checked every place I can, Carol. With all this confusion, we'll just have to wait. If Tim bailed out, he'll get back. I know it. I'm sure of it. Why, he's had a hundred forced landings. Once he was lost in a snowstorm for a whole week. Everybody said he couldn't be alive. They gave up the search. Then one day he was brought into town on a sled by a couple of Indian squaws. And another time, it was at the stage fair he was sky riding. All of a sudden, the motor fell out of his plane. People screamed. And he made a perfect landing right in front of the governor's grandstand. Why, nothing ever happens to Tim. He has luck. He certainly has, and that isn't all he has. From the very first, I've been afraid I couldn't shake you free of him. Hello? Yes, speaking. Thank you. Goodbye. That was Redcliffe. In half an hour, they'll be bringing in another boatload. It'll be about the last of them. Wait for me outside. I'll be dressed in a minute. started coming off. Well, then where could he be? Why, Carol, there are probably a thousand men on this boat. Suppose we could have missed him. But you said we saw the first of them. It's easy to overlook someone in a crowd like this. Look, you stay here near this gangplank. I'll go over there near the other one. All right.
darling, are you hurt? Oh, this? Oh, it's just a new fad collar I picked up on the other side of the channel. Oh, Tim, I knew nothing would happen to you. Sure you did. I told you, didn't I? Oh, it's so good to hold you in my arms again. You know, all the time I was floating around out in that channel, I was thinking of you. Look, look, Tim. I couldn't get it off. Congratulations, Baker. Getting through and all that sort of thing. Oh, thank you, sir. Mr. Baker. Oh. Uh, our car is ready. Well, I won't need it now. Some friends have met me unexpectedly. Thank you for all your trouble. You won't forget Thursday. Oh, no, no. I'll change the bandage. And thank you for your blanket. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Tim. I know, honey. I'm a worm.